I actually had a, quite a mystical experience driving into this place for the first time. And I can't explain it, but I had this sense of this is where I belong. You don't really see it on the outside as much. I mean, it's obviously an intriguing shaped building. You walk in the door and it is like being surrounded by jewels. It's just majestic. You have a long history of the church in this community, the long history of outreach and service in the community, played a prominent role throughout uh, the 175 years that it's been here. That's what this church has done, integrated itself, embedded itself into this community in order to make a positive difference. We are involved with uh, AA meetings are held here, Al-Anon for the families, of course. Blood drives take place here as well. It's even used for polling during election seasons, childhood education. Our facilities can be an asset, not just for us, because it's not just about us. It's about welcoming our community in, into our space so that we can be an asset. Wes Haynes, who's a preservationist, has called it the most important architectural building in the entire state of Connecticut. It's that significant uh, to where it's now going to be recognized as the first National Historic Landmark in the city of Stamford. The congregation decided back in the 1940s that with the growth in the city and the size of the membership, the old church that they had on Broad Street uh, was no longer going to be big enough for them. They contacted Wallace K. Harrison, who was a mid-century, 20th century architect. He had worked on Rockefeller Center, the 1939 World's Fair. He traveled to France and he was inspired by some of the Gothic cathedrals, particularly Saint-Chapelle. And in addition to the beautiful stained glass, he also worked with some engineers to pioneer the style of architecture on the walls so that you don't have any columns in the way. So you have an entirely open space along with the beautiful light coming in. But like with anything, uh, if you're, you see it year after year again, it's been here for over 60 years now, we kind of start to take it for granted. If we don't figure out how to save this place, it can fall to ruin. This is not a structure that will age well with the weather and the sun. The wonders of this room is that it really was, in many ways, experimental architecture. It, was, it really was cutting edge. It was, had never been done here uh, in the United States anyway. When you think of the different uh, stones and you think of the uh, way in which this is all held together, I think there's about 45 miles worth of rods that hold the whole structure together. Time is taking its toll on this incredible building. It's a combination of the, the New England climate, where you get you know heat and humidity in the summer, and then you know cold and ice and snow in the winter time, causes a lot of expansion contraction of the concrete panels and the glass, which can lead to uh, cracking and leaking and eventually water damage. So the challenge that we face is we have this amazing structure, which you know takes your breath away but we have to be good stewards of it as well. The theme of the campaign is preserving the past and partnering for the future. We are trying to raise $7 million to do this multi-phase, multi-year program. The uh, National Historic uh, Landmark status is an important uh, milestone, I think, in terms of making it clear to the community and potential donors that uh, we're here to stay. This place even for people who are not of faith, there's something about this tower that lifts eyes and gives hope and that says we can dream big dreams and we can do audacious things if we just commit ourselves to doing it.